service as a uh, docking compartment and an airlock for Russian spacewalks. And again, it sets the stage uh, for the choreography that is uh, expected uh, to begin no earlier than mid-July with the launch of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a proton rocket. Two days after that uh, module is launched, the ISS Progress 77 cargo ship that arrived at the station for an automated docking to the pier's docking compartment back in February will undock, literally extracting piers from the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment of the station, and then the progress will be used to deorbit piers to a fiery demise in the Pacific Ocean. That will clear the port on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment for the automated docking of the multipurpose laboratory module about eight days after it is launched and checked out during its free flight toward the International Space Station. One hundred and seventy in MRM2. Is zero decimal thirty-seven uh, for AV1. Is zero decimal thirty-eight for AV2 or lung pressures. Copy. Very good. Keep going. У нас там с вами инжектор четыре минуты работает, правильно? Injector should be on for four minutes, right? Yes, it's into minute five. Okay, um, the um, flow selector should be transitioned to uh, position uh, closed after the end of minute five of injector operation. Copy. 120 in MRM2. Five minutes are up. Copy. As uh, the depressurization of the Poisk airlock continues in advance of the opening of the hatch to begin uh, this morning's spacewalk, by Novitsky and Dubrov, the International Space Station is flying 260 statued miles, crossing the east coast of South America, south of Buenos Aires, Argentina, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Uh, right now, the pressure in MRM2 is uh, 85. Copy. A 70 millimeters mercury um, is the pressure in MRM2, 0 decimal 38 for both EV1 and EV2 crew members. When we reach um, uh, 20 millimeters mercury in uh, MR. While Novitsky and Dubrov are uh, poised to begin uh, their spacewalk this morning, uh, Dubrov on the far left of your screen, Novitsky second from the right, they were assisted uh, in suiting up a few hours ago by NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei on the far right in this crew portrait. Shane Kimbrough, a second from the left, Megan MacArthur, Thomas Pesquet of the European Space Agency, and Station Commander Aki Hoshide from the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency are uh, just about uh, to begin their post-sleep period.
having awakened uh, while spacewalk preparations uh, were taking place a few hours ago. They have a full complement of scientific activities and maintenance work on tap for the course of the day, including uh, Megan MacArthur uh, working uh, along with uh, Vandehei in uh, reviewing EVA uh, procedures for Pesquet and Kimbro for the two uh, spacewalks they will conduct in a couple of weeks on June 16th and June 20th for the installation of the uh, first pair of IROSA or ISS roll-up solar arrays on the P6 truss of the station to uh, augment uh, the two of the six power channels on the international outpost. Thirty and MRM zero decimal thirty seven for both EV uh, crew suit pressure. The uh, depressurization of the Poisk airlock is continuing in a uh, methodical fashion. The uh, cosmonauts running about 15 to 20 minutes behind uh, schedule in their uh, pre-spacewalk timeline. However, uh, this planned six and a half hour spacewalk, uh, plenty of margin, no issues. Uh, once the cosmonauts get outside, uh, they will set out uh, for their first task, and that will be the replacement of a removable panel of fluid flow regulators on the uh, Zarya module. That was the first module, first component of the International Space Station launched back on November 20th, 1998 on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. These uh, panels have been replaced uh, twice before by Russian cosmonauts in 2004 and 2013 due to the end of their service life. Fifteen millimeters in MRM two. Zero decimal thirty seven uh, pressure in both suits. Excellent. We have our first uh, trio of social media questions uh, on the uh, hashtag Ask NASA that uh, we hope you'll continue to send questions through during the course of this morning's activities. The first from Fred Cherry. He asks, do the Russian spacesuits have a safety feature like the SAFER unit on U.S. spacesuits, SAFER being the acronym for Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue? Those are the jet-powered backpacks that astronauts wear when they exit the Quest airlock for U.S.-based spacewalks. The answer is no, they do not have uh, that type of propulsive rescue capability, but they do have multiple tethers that keep them uh, tethered to all uh, 
aspects of the Russian segment of the station as they go about their work uh, outside. Roger. So that if uh, in the unlikely event a tether would fail, they are double and sometimes triple tethered to uh, Russian segment structure that would prevent them from inadvertently floating away. Countdown. The uh, next question from Rafael de Palma. He asks, what kind of experiments will be installed on the handrails of the Poisk module at the end of today's spacewalk? There are two uh, sets of experiments. One is called the test experiment. Uh, that uh, will uh, be installed on the handrail for the exposure of microbiological specimens delivered from Earth to study the impact of uh, low Earth orbit on the viability of microflora and uh, the installation of the Venoslavost panels on uh, the Poisk module. Venoslavost is the Russian word for endurance. Those will expose uh, samples of materials for space ap application uh, to study the impact of spaceflight factors on the mechanical properties of those materials. These are uh, various experiments uh, that have been uh, installed and removed uh, from time to time throughout uh, the course of Russian spacewalks. Uh, the data collected uh, by the Russian flight controllers for analysis back on the ground. Well, the first one is 405 or 406. Final question for now comes from Carla Cram, who asks, six hours seems like a really long time to be out on a spacewalk. What are the risks for fatigue? Today's spacewalk, for example, uh, is scheduled for six and a half hours or so uh, once it gets underway. And if you think that's long, the longest spacewalk in the history of spacewalks, eight hours and 56 minutes conducted on March 11, 2001 by astronauts Jim Voss and Susan Helms on the STS-102 mission to the International Space Station to configure uh, cables and cradle assemblies uh, on uh, the truss of the International Space Station in advance of the delivery of the U.S. Destiny Laboratory. Six hours uh, is actually one of the shorter uh, duration spacewalks. Uh, usually they last six and a half hours and the crew members are well trained and well rested to accommodate all of that work. EVA will go away and our computer and we'll switch over to our computer, and it will be guiding you through with the caution and warning messages. Copy. The uh, two cosmonauts, Novitsky and Dubrov, about to uh, transition uh, to autonomous power, essentially placing their suits on internal battery power for the duration of the spacewalk. This is the precursor to the opening of the hatch to the Poisk airlock that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. Temperature settings to set them for your comfort level. Copy. And all of you will be in the automated mode of temperature control. Copy. Copy. And there is a good view of the uh, Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, in which Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov are in the final stages of their uh, suit checks. 
communications checks with the Russian flight controllers before opening up the hatch that will begin uh, today's spacewalk. The uh, Poisk uh, module was attached to the International Space Station back on November 12, 2009. This module equipped with two hatches to support spacewalks, also serving as a docking port for arriving uh, Russian vehicles, just as the pier's docking compartment has been. What's the MV pressure in MRM2? 11 millimeters. Copy. Station Houston on space to ground one for any crew member when convenient regarding exercise constraints. Piotr. And I'm ready to put step 11 in work. All right. Prep cue card 7. And please put step 11 in work for our go. Oh, now go. All right. You can put step 11 from cue card 7 in work. Copy. All right. Temperature control handle is going to be in preliminary position 6. It's set. It's set. And we are monitoring the pressure in the suit. 0.30. 8, 0 0.38 for both suits, and now we are transitioning to internal power. We are turning off the pump and the uh, fan, and we are activating the, pushing down the transmitter button, and then we are going on to the internal power, and then in 15 minutes we are activating the pump and the fan and the transmitter in 15 seconds. That's uh, correct. All right, I'm putting it in work. I'm turning off the fan and the pump as well. And transmitter. Fan is off. And then the switch, please put, please don't forget about the switch for internal power and then primary transmitter. I'm on internal power for suit one, and then primary fan, primary transmitter, and the pump, and I am in the prime in the back backup pump. And for the second suit, the same. And uh, what do you see on the display? Battery power 28.8, and uh, for the second one, battery power is 27.6. Copy. Novitsky and Dubrov now uh, have placed their suits on battery power. Once again, unlike a U.S. spacewalk out of the Quest airlock, where the start of a spacewalk is measured by the initiation of the suits on internal battery power, the elapsed time of a Russian spacewalk is measured from hatch open to hatch close. All right, and it is 5.5. Uh, control panel, please uh, press to in the off heat exchanger in the off position, uh, and it's no longer illuminated for suit one and suit two. Uh, off, suit one is off, suit two is off. We are disconnecting electrical umbil umbilicals from the Orlans and covering the electrical connectors with the MLI. The International Space Station uh, now entering an orbital sunrise, moving from southwest to northeast, just off the southeast coast of South Africa. And please cover Orlan electrical connectors with MLI. All right, we have 
second the second suit we have the umbilical disconnected and we have the flaps closed All right, the next step will be to disconnect the electrical umbilicals. The umbilicals. And the timer is at zero. We, um, the EVA counter will um, start up. And then on the BSS uh, Orlan interface unit, we need to close O2 and cover the flaps. Uh, so we need to monitor the pressure in the suits and in the tanks. That's all correct. And fluid umbilical. For suit one is disconnected. For suit two is disconnected. We uh, the timer the timers have started up on BSS our line interface panel put it into unintelligible O2 is is closed O2 is closed PET timer started counting EVA time and we are standing by. Everything's closed. Please monitor the suit pressure between 0 0.35 and 0 0.4. For the first one, it's 0 0.36. For the second one, and 0 0.356. It's a little bit more than 0 0.35. And we are monitoring the pressure in the primer tank uh, higher than 360, so it's 400 unintelligible for the first one. We are handing over uh, communications uh, from one satellite to another on our tracking and data relay satellite system. We'll regain uh, our downlink view of the poise Gerlock and other views of the International Space Station momentarily as uh, Oleg Novitsky and uh, Pyotr Dubrov are moments away from opening up the hatch to the Poisk docking uh, airlock to begin uh, this morning's spacewalk. The uh, major objective again is uh, the disconnection of a number of cables and uh, telemetry uh, equipment components to the pier's docking compartment in advance of their uh, of the undocking of piers later this year by the Progress 77 cargo ship that will dispose of piers, clearing that uh, port on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station for the arrival of a brand new module, a huge module, the multi-purpose laboratory module called Naoka, the Russian word for science, 43 feet long, 13 and a half feet wide, that will weigh more than 22 tons, launched to the station later this year on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. I am 
I'm holding on to the container, pressurized container. Right. Okay, got it. And the pressurized container is right behind my backpack. Great. And now we're covering the connectors with the MLI flap and just uh, make sure that it's tight and secure. Yep, and we need the cameras up. Here we have it. Secure. And now the cameras. Once the hatch is opened, uh, Pyotr Dubrov will be first out. Again, he'll be wearing the Orlon suit bearing the blue stripes. Novitsky as EV1 or extravehicular crew member number one will wear the suit bearing the red stripes. The uh, EV hatch is based on the results of the medical uh, monitoring. <laughs> Uh, what about the control panel? Does it say anything about it? No, just for the suit panel. For some reason, I'm getting very warm and fuzzy feeling. Okay, uh, uh, ORCA valves are closed right now, and you're connected. You're demated from the fluid umbilicals and, and on internal power. Uh, that is a good understanding. Dmitry. Okay, then I, I think I'll uh, hand it over to Vladimir and he will guide you through um, the EVA timeline. And then we'll um, get together again uh, during uh, uh, your repress operation. Greetings, guys. Um, uh, Happy uh, uh, spring morning to you. Um, so we got to go uh, to open the hatches. Can we verify configuration of the uh, tethers? Yes. Um, I have my safety tether uh, constantly uh, connected to me. And I'm going to uh, rehook it to handrail 6123. Uh, that is a firm, uh, good configuration. And then uh, do you have an extra tether on the uh, logo uh, container? On test, I can confirm two. Um, tethers. Uh, Piotr, uh, 
could go ahead and get the um uh, uh open to verify that the um bolts are uh removed uh all the way out all the way out. I can confirm that. And uh, the levers are facing each other. They are. Okay. You are go to uh, work with the range um, with the custom tool that is and um, you will be working with the tool um, to make sure that the, all the rollers are out of their seats so that um, all of them are out of uh, the groove that are holding them. The handle is installed. The rollers are starting to move out. Fedor, do you want me to hold it from this side? No, I think this is good. Use the wrench all the way to a click, uh, verifying that they're uh, not misaligned. Yes, I took them all the way to a click. And I hear a click. Uh, let's uh, remove the uh, hatch opening tool and start working with the pushers. Copy. Let me stow the, the wrench. Oleg, can you check the pressure gauge reading? Well, I already turned away from it, but if you really want me to. But it was 12 millimeters when we started. Okay, starting to work with the pushers. And I'm kind of holding on to the pusher. Do you see anything flying out? Right now the pressure is eight ish millimeters. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we have confirmation from the Russian uh, flight control team in Korolyov that the hatch uh, to the Poisk module that you see in the field of view here through external space station cameras, that hatch now open at 12.53 a.m. Central Time, 1.53 a.m. Eastern Time. And with that, the 238th spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades now underway. I see the first uh, dust particle fly out. 
do you keep uh, the pusher uh, tight uh, continuously? Yes, I am. Is it a hard to push on it? No, not seriously. Once again, uh, the hatch to the Poisk module is open at 12.53 a.m. Central, 1.53 a.m. Eastern Time. Today is a spacewalk by Oleg Novitsky and uh, Pyotr Dubrov officially underway. This Poisk module was delivered to the International Space Station on a modified uh, Soyuz uh, booster that launched it uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome back in November of 2009 automatically docking to the space-facing port of the Russian segment, almost identical in nature to the pier's docking compartment that is being decommissioned today by Novitsky and Dubarov. Then the cover follows it, but I wouldn't say uh, unreluctantly. So there's, there's not that much of a pressure dif differential. Пробуй за ручку, может, усилие за ручку хватит для открытия крышки. Try to pulling it by the handle and see if uh, that helps to to push the cover aside into the space rather than uh, having it uh, Pressing it back. Yep, that that did the trick. Uh, the hatch is open. Copy. We'll write down the time for when the EV hatch was open. Okay. And now I I just need to reposition the uh, hook that was holding the hatch cover. For which I have to back out so that the cover doesn't slam on, on me. The next vehicle uh, that will dock to that docking port at the top of your screen to the Poisk module will be the uh, unpiloted ISS Progress 78 cargo ship that is being prepared down in Baikonur for launch with about three tons of uh, food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 65 crew. The, um, The um, uh, hook is secured on panel 203. That uh, unpiloted progress resupply ship scheduled for launch on uh, June 29th with an automated docking to that uh, docking port that you see on Poisk at the top of your screen on July 1st. And it's ready for installation. I wish I could find the marks. Okay. 
я не вижу. I don't see it. Так, вижу одну. Я... I can see one mark. А он сейчас в руках кольцо держит, я сейчас скажу ему. I have the hand, one hand holding it. Ребята, и пока работаете... Guys, while you're working, activate the sublimators after you install the ring. Петр, you first. Copy in work, and I also copy. Four marks here. So I just need to repeat the actions. Okay, one is done. Now the second one. And uh, Alec, can you assist? No, the sealed container is in the way, in Oleg's way. Only I can reach. Okay, that's fine. Just be careful. Press it down. On the top, it's okay. I have it. Second tab. I have the second tab. Completely recessed. Protective ring installed. Sublimator is. Now you may activate the sublimator. Piotr first, then Alek in position of a six. Sublimator is on. And I have the heat exchanger indication. The thermal control handle is in position number two. With the hatch uh, to the poise airlock now open and the uh, spacewalk and underway, the two cosmonauts have installed a protective ring around uh, the circumference of the hatch to protect it uh, from any micrometeoroid uh, debris strikes that might occur while the hatch is open throughout the course of uh, this morning's spacewalk. Piotr Dubrov will be the first out of the airlock. We should, uh, and now we do, see him uh, emerging from Poisk at the outset of uh, the first spacewalk of his career, as it is uh, for Oleg Novitsky as well. And we can see you on the camera. I can see the gaps banner. Yes, and that's where you will rehook, reconnect the adjustable tether hook. Copy. Okay, my tools are a bit in the way. You can uh, go back here a little bit along the cutter and uh, along the wing nut, wing screw. Yes, I see it. Okay, it's uh, released now. Right shoot range is uh, now secure. Remating the adjustable range to the gap spanner right now. I got it. Alec, do you feel the cooling? Yes, I have coolant circulating. Very good. Piotr, how about yourself? Report your cooling status. Yes, I can feel the coolant circulating. Very good. 
both tethers secured on the outside um, EV handrails and secured to Besartem. Piotr Dubrov uh, outside of the Poisk uh, airlock wearing the suit, uh, the Orlan spacesuit, bearing the blue stripes. He'll be joined momentarily by Oleg Novitsky. Okay, we are completely outside the station. Congratulations. And also reconnect uh, your tether to the gap spanner. Your fixed length tether. And I will try to get the sealed container closer to the exit. Wait, wait, Alec. Get to the hatch opening and prepare the energy kit, commemorative kit. Okay, and now the um, selector valve, the temperature control valve to zero position, and automatic thermal control system to the middle position. Aster on. The uh, boom that you see or that uh, we saw a moment ago on the side of the Poisk module, that's the uh, Strela boom, Strela being the Russian word for arrow. That is a uh, telescoping boom that is used uh, to transport cosmonauts uh, hither and yon about the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The other end of that boom is attached uh, to the pier's docking compartment on the opposite side of the Russian segment, the Earth-facing side. It will be detached and demated uh, from uh, the pier's docking compartment as one of the earlier tasks on uh, the docket for today's spacewalk and uh, retracted to be stowed on uh, the Poisk module. Alec, you're close to the EV hatch. You are ready for transfer. I'm trying to secure my hook. Now you can shepherd it. Uh, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I'm going to secure the energy commemorative kit now. Okay, you can hold on to the commemorative kit for energy and also have the extension ready. Maybe it will be better, and then Alec can do the video. Okay, at 6009, handrail, it's the one towards Pechao. You can reconnect there. I may try. I am rehooked now. And you can secure to the gap spanner. And now you can take over the energy commemorative kit. Energy commemorative kit is secured to my tether. Okay, you may just hang it on here right now where it is um, accessible. Okay, will do.
so that you can rotate a little bit, and that is excellent. This is very good. Alec, you may now connect the glacier camera. I pressed the button, but I don't know if the camera is working or not. Remember to hold, to depress the video camera button for about three seconds, and I cannot make sure if it is actually working or not, the Glacier video camera. I do not see if uh, the little light indicator is illuminated or not. It's working right now, for sure. OK, copy. OK, now you can focus it on Piotr smoothly, slowly, and record for about a minute. Lighting should be good. Yes, it is. It's a little bit to the right and uh, on top of me. Excellent. Alex, do you think you can observe the Earth in the background? of the shot? Yes, I think we are going to get um, very good composition. We have solar arrays. We have the service module. That's how we thought it would be. OK, you may stop the recording, deactivate the Glacier video camera. I'm rotating a little bit. Yes, and then you can transfer the commemorative kit. Okay, so after you rehook it, uh, you may tether the commemorative kit. Yes, it's already done. This is Mission Control Houston, just over 20 minutes into uh, this morning's spacewalk by Alec Novitsky and Piotr Dubrov. Uh, you see Dubrov outside of the Poisk airlock. The uh, hatch was open to uh, mark the official start of the spacewalk at 12.53 a.m. Central Time, 1.53 a.m. Eastern Time. The uh, two cosmonauts are uh, capturing some video documentation of their initial uh, activities outside of Poisk. They uh, will make their way to the Zarya module with a, uh, a device called a fluid flow regulator panel that will replace an aging unit on Zarya. It does exactly what the name suggests. It uh, assists in the uh, flow of fluids uh, through the uh, plumbing of the Zarya module, which was the first component of the International Space Station launched back on November 20th, 1998. Away from the hedge so that Alec can also uh, egress the hatch. 
Стрела is a little bit in my way here. You are touching it, but uh, you don't have to go to the port, but you just have to go down a little bit. Please try. Петр, when you receive the sealed container safety tether, secure it down at the gap spanner, not on the hatch handrail. Otherwise, it will not allow us to move the sealed container further. All right, I can secure it to the same handrail where my adjustable tether is. Yes, you are absolutely correct. This is not exactly right. I need to secure here better. Петр, yes. Петр, у тебя с КВО уже 13 градусов на входе. Это, наверное, холодновато. Ты убавь, поставь пока в первое положение, а потом подрегулируй. Кран теплоколос в первое положение. Хорошо, поставь единицу. Uh, uh, maybe you can put your select um, switch a temperature control switch into position one, Piotr, not two. Maybe it's a little bit too cool. Okay, copy and work. As the International Space Station flies 260 statute miles over the Bering Sea, still waiting uh, for our first glimpse of Oleg Novitsky, the uh, Soyuz MS-18 commander and Expedition 65 flight engineer, You've been watching uh, Piotr Dubrov outside of the Poisk module. Novitsky will join him uh, shortly. The first task uh, for them on uh, this morning's spacewalk will be the installation of a new uh, fluid flow regulator panel on the Zarya module. Other hooks and one container. Maybe I can get to it from this side. If the tethers allow you, yes. And also, my drink bag has been maybe not properly filled because water is being spilled out from the left side. I can take the second tether 
and uh, pull it out here, pull it through here. I'm holding the tether right here. Okay, I'm secured here on the inside. I'm trying to pull out the tether right now. Throw it. This particular tether hook is not the best location for it, maybe. Okay, done here. Okay, here you go. Don't hurry. Here is the gap spanner. And so now back, yes, that is correct. To the left and down, more down, okay? To the gap spanner. And now you can pull it in, and Alec, you pull it out slowly and uh, hand it over. Are you holding the container? Yes, I am. I can see that this part of the tether is pristine white. And it weighs more than you, Piotr. Okay, use one hand to hold down the container. Okay, here on this plane, please. Yes, Alec, right here. Yes. Um, now this tether. Okay, I have secured this tether and uh, to the left uh, towards the handrail. So it's easier to translate later that way. Peter, while you are standing by, look at your tool carry and do an audit of all the tools. If you have Oleg Novitsky now outside of the Poisk module airlock. What about the? He and Dubrov making sure that all of their tethers are in the uh, correct configuration the as they um, 
also ensure that the container holding the new fluid flow regulator unit is secure. They will transfer that to the Zarya module to replace an aging unit uh, in the uh, Zarya. And Alec, congratulations. You are outside at last. You are EVA. Okay, let me take care of my hook right now, my tether hook. Of course. And it's getting darker right now. Just on time. Okay, the tools. Ratchet wrench is secured. The cutters are in place. Okay, let us activate your video cameras, your helmet video cameras. I activated mine, but I cannot yet. Now the camera. The station uh, moving into an orbital sunset over the Pacific Ocean, moving from northwest to southeast. When you start, you may rotate uh, towards Piotr. So the camera looks that way too. Copy. Inaudible. It's easier for me to ask Piotr to activate it. Okay, the sealed container hooks are secured. Now you may release the handrail on which it was secured before. I do not see any buttons here. Let's go this way. No, the other way. The new camera is on, the old camera. I cannot see its light indicator. It's uh, not in my field of view. It's recessed. I have to have a direct line of sight in order to see it. Okay, I can see the light indicator now. It is illuminated, and I can see the green color. And here, too, it's illuminated. Copy. And the two cosmonauts in the process of activating their HD helmet cameras. Your translation. Once they are up and running, Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera will be marked uh, with the number 20 in the lower right-hand corner. You are holding Piotr Dubrov's helmet camera will be number 18.
У Олега камеры включены, я понимаю, да, Петр? Олег, the cameras are... Олег's cameras are on? Yes. And Петр? My cameras are also on. Copy. Олег, please uh, look over your translation path. Yes, I can visualize my translation along the FTB handrails. Maybe you can pull the container with the tether and along with me also because it's hard for me to rotate. <laughs> yes, it's time to do that. We are not receiving any video images right now, so please narrate. I'm trying to turn on my lights, but I can't reach the switch. Copy. Could you move a little bit closer to me and we can turn on the USOS lights? you and uh, have you turned on yours this is mission control houston you're looking at a view of the russian mission control center in Korolyov on the outskirts of moscow 39 minutes into uh, this morning's spacewalk by alec novitsky and Pyotr dubrov both cosmonauts outside of the poisk uh, module airlock here, right? Spacewalk got underway at uh, 12.53 a.m. Central Time, 1.53 a.m. Eastern Time. You can move a the two cosmonauts are beginning to make their way toward the Zarya module. I'm trying to attach For the first task of this morning's spacewalk, which is the replacement of a fluid flow regulator panel for that uh, pioneer module, the Zarya module. Tether. Launched uh, on November 20th, 1998, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on a proton rocket to begin the era of the International Space Station. You pushed me again. All right, we'll get it. The major objective of uh, this morning's spacewalk is the uh, disconnection of a number of cables and antenna components for the uh, Piers docking compartment as the decommissioning of that module that has been uh, in service for the past 20 years continues. It will be uh, undocked by the unpiloted ISS Progress 77 cargo ship and uh, deorbited to plummet into, into the Pacific Ocean later this year following the launch of the new Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. Great. Please stand by one. I got it. I'm releasing it. Now I'm translating towards you. Got it. Got the hook. 
for the container. And our first uh, HD helmet camera view from Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera as he uh, begins uh, to make his way from the Poisk module to the Zarya module. Right, I'm trying to connect uh, the long red to you. Okay, got it. And the container is connected to that one. Well, I can move my hook, and that'll be it. Let me connect the shorts tether here. Okay, and now I have the container. You got it? Yes. I'm letting it go then. I am ready to take it over. Oleg, pull it towards yourself, and I'm letting it go. This is Peter. I got the container. I and I'm letting it go. Okay, and Oleg, you will be moving still to MRM2. And okay, for now, I don't see the EVA hatch, and I'm next to um, handrail 64, 6014. Well, that will be, that's pretty much, the next one will be the EVA hatch. Okay. 
you have the target almost uh, under your feet, and then uh, there is also the antenna, so beware. Kursk is uh, next to your right leg, and then the target is right next to your left leg, so be careful. It's a little bit m to the right of you. Great. I'll see Sinego here. Am I clear? It's still next to your left foot. Got it. And I'm releasing it. And those cable connectors. I need to have them secured. And I'm trying to secure it. I have the container. Great. And I'm letting it go. And the target is again right behind you, so be careful. Got something under my feet. Yep. All right, we see the transfer hatch. And uh, that handrail should be somewhere there. Is that right? Yes. I see it. All right, Peter. I got it. And I let it go. I need to see the target just to be careful around it. Maybe I can turn around like this. And is the container secured to this one? Yes. Okay.
beautiful. See, I am. I got through here. Yes, sir. I got the container, and I'm releasing the container. This is Mission Control Houston approaching the one hour mark into uh, this morning's spacewalk. An update for uh, Piotr Dubrov's helmet camera. It uh, now is represented by the number 22 rather than 18 in the lower right hand corner. The uh, two cosmonauts uh, have made their way over to the Zarya module with uh, the airtight container that you see in the field of view here. That contains a new fluid flow regulator for the Zarya module. They're in the process of securing that container to the side of Zarya. They will open up the container and take out the fluid flow regulator and uh, install it to replace an aging unit this is the third time in the history of uh, the Zarya module that uh, this particular component has been replaced uh, because of an end of uh, service lifetime. The hook secured to adjustable handrail. to correction to the gap spanner. Did Piotr leave a lot of wire ties there? Yeah. And I got it and I'm releasing it. Done. It hit your legs a little bit. And you got the hook of the container itself, right? And you have it secured, yes. I don't think I can get closer. I got it. And I'm letting it go. I have the hook connected to the second gap spanner. Copy your leg, we see it. And the container is now secured on the gap spanner. Copy. I am translating to unintelligible. Thank 
I have the container, copy, and I'm releasing the container. Have the long um, red connected to one handrail, and the short red will be connected to the second one. Got it. And now I see the. Fifty-eight minutes into uh, this morning's spacewalk by Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov. And I can they are at the, the Zarya module, where they uh, have begun work to replace a fluid flow regulator panel. The first task in uh, today's spacewalk highlighted by the uh, continuing decommissioning of the pier's docking compartment. More questions coming in on social media for us. NZC asking, do Russians also have cameras on their helmets? The answer is no, they do not. They have handheld cameras. They borrow U.S. helmet cameras in support of spacewalk activities so that we can uh, basically look over their shoulders and uh, so that engineers at the Russian Mission Control Center as well as here in Mission Control in Houston can have the benefit of seeing what the cosmonauts are seeing. Jeff Maskell is asking, uh, do astronauts or cosmonauts ever let go of the space station handrails relying just on tethers during an EVA or spacewalk, EVA standing for extravehicular activity? They do sometimes, but uh, they would not only be tethered, but they would have their feet planted uh, in foot restraints for extra protection against inadvertently floating away. The tethers uh, provide uh, their first line of protection, but uh, they also uh, would have the benefit of either holding onto handrails when available or having their feet planted in foot restraints like a telephone repairman on a cherry picker. And I see the handrail. Got it? Got it? Yes. Taking your questions throughout uh, today's spacewalk on hashtag AskNASA. If you have questions, we'll be happy to answer them as uh, the morning continues and uh, our spacewalk, the 238th in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades continues. I have both feathers connected to FGB. And the hook. So the pressurized container is also secured to the handrails of the FGB. I have the container and I am releasing it. Uh, 
And I'm moving towards the FGB handrails using soft tethers. And now we need to figure out what's going on with the hooks. This is the container's hook for the container. So, we have our hooks and the containers, container hooks secured to the handrail on FGB, copy. Moving further, and I see the plates. Right, and right next to you, there should be a handrail. Next to which the uh, oh, next to which corridor is going to be working. Copy. Novitsky and Dubarov are currently securing this airtight container holding the new fluid flow regulator panel for the Zarya module. Once that's complete, they'll open up a um, thermal insulation flap on a connector patch panel located near one of the Zarya handrails and begin the process of extracting the old fluid flow regulator unit. All right, so this handrail between the panels I'm going to um, secure it with my uh, unadjustable uh, short tether. Okay, this is Oleg. I got it. I have a hold on it. Copy Oleg. This is Peter. I'm letting it go. We still have a lot of room there. We can actually even uh, stretch it out to the next handrail. I think so. All right. Well, from this body position, I will not may 
be able to uh, stretch to, to the next candle. Okay, I can uh, hold it while you translate, computer. Okay, uh, are you, did you get a hold of it? Yes, I'm holding it. Okay, stand by Oleg. I'm next to the folded solar array. Okay, uh, this is all like on my side. Um, no, this is better. Uh, let's turn it towards me while you are uh, adjusting how it's moving. Copy. I have a visual on the handrail. I have a hold on it. And I think we should install it now. Well, like, why don't you uh, hold it while I rehook myself? to the middle handrail. No problem, buddy. And that hook will probably have to be rehooked because it's going to be in the way eventually. The uh, hook with the tether that's uh, practically all the way out is, it's pretty much, it doesn't have any slack. I think it's, it's the one on the other side that's too tight. So do you think we should um, re-secure it to something closer? Can't we uh, um, uh, secure the uh, bars that have the eyelets to to the tethers that are holding um, the container? Yeah, you can use those eyelets. Copy. That's complete. Uh, sorry, I um got uh, swung away from where I was before. 
Не, он не защелкнулся. Я когда я пытаюсь его защелкнуть, не относится. Сейчас я возьмусь тоже за эту перекладину. I'm gonna hang on to the same bar where the tether is attached. Oh, got it. The second one is in. The marks uh, match. And uh, the lever should we? It should be um, in the closed position now. Uh, yes, we're in working on getting in there. Both latches are in closed position, and the platform is um, secured in place. How are you feeling? We're feeling uh, good. The fingers are a little bit uncomfortable. Okay, then um, let us uh, rest a couple of minutes, um, uh, kind of look ahead at um, the, um, the task, task coming up next. Okay, the hook, one of the hooks is, is uh, on the top. The other tether will definitely not reach. So we'll probably have to rehook those um, uh, tethers. So remove it from the top. And secure the panel uh, with it because it's uh, really short. And then we're also going to secure it to the panel. And then the second panel will be restrained by the uh, wire tie. The bend radius is really a limited factor. Um, we can try to put it around um, on Oleg's side, but I don't know. My um, short tether. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 15 minutes into this morning's spacewalk. Uh, Against uh, the backdrop of the uh, Zvezda service module's solar arrays, the nearly silhouetted forms of uh, Oleg Novitsky and uh, Pyotr Dubrov as they work at the Zarya module to replace a fluid flow regulator panel. This is... Uh, designed uh, to install a new unit to replace an aging one uh, whose service lifetime is nearing an end. You see on the far right-hand uh, side of your screen the Poisk module from which uh, Novitsky and Dubrov emerged uh, at 12.53 a.m. Central Time, 1.53 a.m. Eastern Time to begin the sixth spacewalk this year out of the International Space Station. This is the first spacewalk in the careers of both Novitsky and Dubarov. Why don't you guys open um, the panel using the ratchet wrench? Okay, as I showed you already, the old uh, panel has been secured. Correct. How many turns? 
would you like me to make? Uh, two full turns. Yeah, done. Copy. A great view uh, from HD uh, helmet camera capability as uh, the cosmonauts uh, begin work to open up the airtight container housing the new fluid flow regulator panel. Trying to figure out how to position myself better. На перестыковочной плате тебе надо будет расстыковать разъем. Присматриваешь там место? Петр, you will need to position yourself on the um, connector plate. Папа, ну открой. Наверное, на ворсовке там плетет. You can also um, open the MLA uh, flap uh, because they're, they're secured with uh, Velcro. Alec Nowitzki uh, on the left, Piotr Dubrov opening up a thermal insulation panel on the Zarya module. He's on your right. The International Space Station entering an orbital sunrise over the South Atlantic, moving from southwest to northeast. will skirt uh, up the east coast of the continent of Africa, just to the east of Johannesburg. Main panel, and then um, find the cable that goes beyond. To the connector plate. And it's coming away from the connector. So it's coming here, then here, then goes down there. So the cable from uh, our panel, we understand, is this one. Yes, it is. So right now, it's uh, coming across the middle of the uh, uh, restraint plate. Uh, can you confirm that that's the right cable? Um, yes, but when you open it up and check the labeling, um, that will be a double sure. Okay. Как маркировка разъема СПРЖ один X один. It's SPRG X one. SPRG one dash X one is the labeling. Copy, Peter, and that's the right one. Copy, you confirmed. Ready to demade the connector. An excellent view of Oleg Novitsky on the left, Pyotr Dubrov on the right, working at the Zarya module in the replacement of a fluid flow regulator unit. Zarya having been launched more than 22 years ago in on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, the first component, the first element of the International Space Station to be launched in the era of the ISS. Uh, leave the connector on the plate. Then close the valve. And demated cable needs to go into a cable clip.
Here's the clip. The graph. Is it tight? I just put um, the cable in one because I think that should be sufficient to hold it in place. Okie dokie. And the MLM, uh, MLI flap on the panel is um, uh, covered. And make sure you do a pull test um, with the handle to make sure that it's secure. Okay. Um, I think I need to go from the other side to do that so that uh, we don't uh, entangle our tethers. The handle's in the right position. Removing the panel. The panel's been removed. This is Mission Control Houston nearing the one and a half hour mark into this morning's spacewalk by Alec Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov outside of the Poisk module on the Russian segment of the station. They're in the uh, home stretch of uh, installing a new fluid flow regulator unit in the Zarya module. And then we're gonna need we have uh, several more social media questions that have come in uh, via hashtag AskNASA. So Luis Granados asks, those components at the end of their service life, how are they disposed of? Have a safe spacewalk. Thanks, Luis. The um, two cosmonauts will jettison manually jettison this airtight container later in uh, this morning's spacewalk. It will be jettisoned retrograde or to the aft portion of the International Space Station to avoid any possibility of recontact with the International Space Station. Its uh, mass and uh, dimensions have been uh, analyzed and will re-enter the Earth's atmosphere uh, within a few weeks, if not months. So that's how this particular component at the end of its uh, service life, the fluid flow regulator being removed from Zarya, will be disposed of. Not yet. And now I do. Bob O'Dare Jr. asks, when does the piers module undock and re-enter? As we said earlier in our broadcast, uh, the unpiloted ISS Progress 77 cargo ship that was launched to the station back in February docked to the piers docking compartment which is on the uh, Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. That will be the method by which Piers is extracted or undocked from its docking port that it has been attached to since September of 2001. And uh, the engines on the Progress 77 cargo ship will be used uh, to fire uh, in a deorbit maneuver to uh, dispose of not only itself but Piers that will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. That undocking will take place about two days after the launch of the new Naoka multipurpose laboratory module from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Once uh, that launch takes place, Russian flight controllers outside of Moscow will assess the health and systems of the new multipurpose laboratory module before it appears undocks. That will clear the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment of the station for the arrival of the Naoka module six days after Piers leaves the International Space Station. Working on the second bolt on my side.
That's just a Should do we open already, Moscow? Так, все готов. Так, что-то мешает нам. Попробуй пойти меня. Федор, try to to pull on it. Doesn't want to open. Как приняли? Moscow, how copy? And you obviously took out all the butterfly uh, bolts. Yes, we did, but the cover won't open. It's it, it's loose, but it may have sealed to the internal surface. Uh, we might use uh, a knife uh, or a screwdriver to try to pry it open, but the handle doesn't work, right? No, the the handle shows open. We're we are uh, actually tagging on it. See, the handle shows open. The bolts. Uh, have been all removed, so uh, so it just it seems like it, it just that it's something is holding it through inside. Uh, you may have to use a cutter to to try to pry it open. What about the the pressure inside? The pressure should have been released even before. Are there any other bolts possibly that we we have overseen? No other bolts. And I can tell that it's it, it has enough crack to to uh, open, but it, it it just goes back and forth, but not out. Oh, never mind. It just it just cracked open. The best thing um, about this is it, it finally budged and we were able to open it. Okay, now make sure that it's tethered uh, so that it doesn't fly away. Which tethers are we supposed to secure them with? I can actually use one of mine, which is adjustable, so I can give it more slack. Are you close um, to the um, ratchet range? Not really sure, but I, I think for me, Oleg, it, it will be easier from where I am located. Okay. This is uh, EV2. I actually have a cutter next to me, so I can come back and... Uh, help Oleg if he needs my help. The lanyard um, has been cut. Copy.
Так, отвернули барашек, платформа свободно перемещается. Платформа и так выходит. Здесь не надо открывать эту калитку. Make sure you open uh, uh, all the items that are preventing it from uh, being retrieved from the airtight container. Um, it wasn't being held by anything, so it just came out on its own. Если готовы, можно устанавливать. Guys, as you are ready, you are go to install it. Fedor will need to take a necessary body position before we do that. Давай, потому что будешь контролировать попадание. А ты, наверное, не натянешься туда, да? Oleg, you can monitor uh, and verify that that I'm um, actually inserting in the right place. I'm ready to take it over from you. Do you have a hold of it? I do, but for the caps, I will need to move closer to you. All right, well, let's see what happens. Okay, hold on for a little while longer. I'm going to go further on my handrail. Now I release. Stand by. On my side, I cannot see the lugs at all. So we do not see the lugs where we should install. There should be four of them. Yes, the lugs are internal, actually. But I cannot see them on this side. I'm trying to hold my surface parallel in parallel. Now I need to feed it in slowly and correctly. Okay, close towards me, please. I'm trying. And to the stop, don't release until you feel that it's inserted to the stop. I am trying to raise it. Okay, I think I'm in the groove now on the handle. Good. I have engagement, I have movement. Do you need any assist? No, I am just going to move along my handrail. And now the hand, hand, handle is secured. Excellent. Now you may mate the connector. Let me take a breather. Okay. 
I'm getting closer to the connector. Uh, do you need some assist? Uh, yes. Uh, hold my legs so they don't uh, fly away on me. Okay, towards me now, please. And now we have uh, secured and uh, tighten the slack on the tether, the adjustable tether on the right, move it a little bit forward. Okay, number one is secure. Okay, now I'm undoing it. You may use the same hook for others. I think I will do that. Number two is uh, release, uh, copy. One hour, 40 minutes into uh, this morning's spacewalk, Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov are working uh, to secure the new fluid flow regulator unit in the Zarya module, having removed the old unit, ensuring uh, that uh, it is secure until it's placed back into an airtight container that they will jettison later in the spacewalk. This is the first task of the uh, morning. After this is complete, uh, they will press ahead then uh, to the major objectives of the spacewalk, which is the uh, retraction of a telescoping uh, boom called the Strelo boom uh, that is attached uh, to the Piers docking compartment, stowing it on the Poisk module, demating an antenna feeder unit from uh, Piers and mating uh, Coors automated rendezvous cables Table here. Maybe that, uh, that have uh, been used uh, for Russian vehicle dockings to the piers docking compartment. All of this, as the decommissioning of the piers uh, module continues in advance of its disposal later this year. It would be easier to cut. Yes, if we could cut in the middle, but we need to secure the other end then. Okay, secure, and now I can try to cut it. Tell me which way to go, right, left. This way is good. It doesn't like to be cut.
this cutter is not very good. I got it. It is cut. Copy. Петр, leave the cords on the red, and uh, let's work on the connector mating. Copy. The cords are on the red. There is one more here. Uh, maybe you don't have to do the last one. Well, I have to because... Uh, there is a wire that it is holding, and uh, I will not be able to access the connector. Oh, well, then. In the middle, I cannot get uh, uh, through the opening in the wire ties. Well, you may pull out the connector because it is secured on one end to the protective ring. Well, if I reach for the tether, then I cannot reach with with the connector to the plate. Okay, got it. Okay, I have the wrench. I can see that you opened the slide wire. Yes. And now raise the tabs here. Just like this. I'm ready to start with connector mating. Copy. You have a go for connector mating. Copy.
Я вел вот по стрелке на закрытие. And uh, align the arrow, maybe the other way, and lock. No, the other way would be demating. Okay, let me see which way. Connector is mated, the tab is closed. Copy. There was a drop and come. Inaudible. Okay. Would you like me to hold it a bit longer? Yes, please. I have it. The connector is now aligned. And we have it on video, so you don't have to do any photography. You may close the flap. And uh, just... Uh, Flying 260 miles over northwest China, one hour, 50 minutes into uh, this morning's spacewalk, the new fluid flow regulator has been installed in the uh, Zarya module. The uh, two cosmonauts, Novitsky and Dubarov, are checking out uh, the final configuration of the connectors that they've mated. Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow are waiting uh, for telemetry from the newly installed unit that will complete the first task of this morning's spacewalk. Is closed. Copy. And the marks are aligned. You need me to hold it a bit longer? Yes, please. From uh, Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera looking uh, at his colleague uh, Pyotr Dubrov, the two cosmonauts both making the first spacewalks of their career. Maybe not anymore. The Earth 260 miles below them. and this wide view of the work site at the Zarya module, adjacent to uh, the Poisk airlock and uh, docking port on the right side of your screen. Novitsky, Dubrov, and NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei launched uh, almost eight weeks ago aboard the uh, Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a two-orbit rendezvous. Alec, maybe you can... Vandehei uh, worked uh, with his two cosmonaut colleagues to help them suit up uh, late uh, Tuesday evening in preparation for this morning's spacewalk. The MLA, MLA flap is closed. 
The wire tie is slightly on the surface. I couldn't really tuck it in. I hope you can see it on the video, how the wire tie is located. Okay, Piotr, thank you. Now remove the safety tether hook from the panel, releasing it right now, the tether hook. The two cosmonauts uh, will uh, conduct a visual inspection of each other's spacesuits. Uh, that's part of the uh, typical protocol during uh, any spacewalk out of the International Space Station, basically called the buddy system. They'll move, they'll move uh, the old uh, fluid flow regulator unit to the uh, Poisk module uh, airlock hatch where it will be stowed Remember, in advance of uh, its being jettisoned later in the spacewalk. The first in half closed position. Yes, it's already half closed. And I'm uh, holding on to the cover right now. A good view from Oleg Novitsky's helmet camera of the old uh, fluid flow regulator unit being stowed in the uh, so-called airtight container that will be jettisoned uh, later in the spacewalk, retrograde from the station, to prevent any possibility of recontacting the orbital laboratory. I'm going to lock my data hook right now and uh, work on the wing screws. Both uh, wing screws are now closed. Uh, excellent. So, now the safety tether hook secure it on the container to be transported. Copy. Oleg, maybe you need to move uh, forward, maybe towards the operator post. I agree. I'm going to move aside for you. So how are we going to switch places? So I can remove the sealed container. 
Let me get closer here and uh, get the uh, hook secured. This tether you have right now, maybe we can rehook it higher up. And the second one, secure it to that handrail over there. I don't think I can reach the hook right now. Okay, actually, we are basically ready to translate back. First of all, locks to open position. And I need to move the container. One lock is in open position, second lock is in open position. The container is uh, free now. Copy. Now you may return them to the operational position. Alek? Return the latches into the working configuration. Both latches are in working configuration. Okay. Report uh, how you feel. We feel good. Okay. Let me hold on to the container. Yes, if you move a little bit, I can hand it over to you. And I'm going to translate towards the handrails via the platform. Hopefully nothing is in the way. And then I can translate. Uh, please check if my tethers are twisted or not. No, they're not twisted. We can see some dust particles flying from under the container, I suppose. I am ready to receive.
I have it and I released it. Okay, let me uh, go to the outside. I am on my feather now. Yes, this feather is in the way, the feather from the sealed container, and it is tight now. Piotr, remember the antennas? Yes, I can see the antenna. Uh, maybe you can move a little bit further, Alex. And I can hold on to the sealed container for a while. I'm holding it and I release the container. Ребята провели проверки подключенной панели. Подключение подтверждено. So we tested the panel and everything seems to be nominal. We can confirm. Excellent. Okay, I moved out of the way. Okay, I'm moving to the handrail, and I got the container. And the adjustable featherettes. All right, both hooks and the safety tether of the pressurized container are connected to the gap spanners. Copy. Piotr, how much space do you need? How far should I get away? Well, uh, I can move for up 40 centimeters. Let me stand by, and you can get a bit closer. Okay. 
взял. Отпускаю. All right, I'm letting it go. Okay. Just a second. I'm, I got it. The paint is peeling. Yep. I am moving along the gap spanner. Do you still have it? Yep. Copy. Just a little bit more. I have it now. Releasing. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 11 minutes into this morning spacewalk by Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov. The 238th spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. One of the upgrades just completed, uh, the installation and checkout of a new fluid flow regulator panel for the Zarya module, the first component ever launched to the International Space Station. I'm using the... Flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov have reported a good checkout and good telemetry coming from the newly installed unit. So the two cosmonauts uh, are in the process of hauling the old unit in an airtight container back to the uh, Poisk module airlock where it will be temporarily stowed before it is jettisoned later in this morning's excursion. Okay. I am secure. I have secured my hooks to uh, gap spanners. Copy. And I got the container. All right. And then I'll need to grab that handle. Okay. The two cosmonauts, after um, exiting uh, the Poisk airlock about 30 minutes behind schedule, are making up time. They're now about uh, 30 minutes ahead of the phased elapsed time for uh, this morning's spacewalk, just about right on the timeline uh, set in the uh, 
pre-spacewalk preparations for this uh, excursion. The first Russian spacewalk since last November when uh, the two Sergeys, Ryzhikov and Kud Sverchkov, conducted a spacewalk in which they uh, performed some preliminary uh, activities for the decommissioning of the pier's docking compartment. Today we'll see the uh, major bulk of that work uh, completed with the disconnection of uh, antenna cables and other telemetry hardware associated with piers that will be discarded via the ISS Progress 77 cargo ship later this year. And right here then. Uh, okay, I see. Oleg, have you pointed it in the right direction? What? Well, I'm trying to move from the other side. And yeah, that was my plan to the operator's position. Um, is that a better? Is there a better route? No, you can you can use e uh, bo either. Just be careful there. Okay. Do you want me to take over? Uh, wouldn't hurt. Could you extend it a little bit more? Okay, there you go. Got it. I need to disconnect and reconnect here. Well, if you could hold it for a second, then I can connect here and then take over. Well, I can move my hook here. Got it. Unintelligible. The container is still here, right? Let me turn around. And I'll hold it.
I have remade it and I'm taking over the container. Got it. I'm releasing it. the best way around here on the side check behind your back and I need to move my feet here. Do you see anything behind my back? Hmm? Doesn't look like there is anything. I just seemed like I touched something with my backpack. Nope, nothing's there. Okay. Right, I've got the container. Seems like I got stuck. You may be grabbing the boom with your backpack. Basically, touching it.
I am a little bit lost. Where do I want to move? There we go. And I need to get to it. Volodya, uh, do we want us to um, attach it, the container next to the operator's position? Yes. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston as we approach the two and a half hour mark into this morning's spacewalk by Alan Novitsky and uh, Pyotr Dubrov. Everything uh, continues to go uh, smoothly, somewhat ahead of schedule actually, as the two cosmonauts have uh, replaced a fluid flow regulator panel, a unit uh, that provides uh, the correct uh, flow of uh, propellant and other fluids uh, through the Zarya module of the International Space Station. The old unit, uh, originally installed in 2013, is now in an airtight container that is being temporarily stowed at the Poisk module airlock hatch. It will be jettisoned uh, later in uh, this morning's spacewalk. Once this uh, activity is complete. The two cosmonauts will take a few minutes to catch their breath before they press ahead to uh, move along to the pier's docking compartment, which is the uh, major objective of uh, today's spacewalk, the final decommissioning of that venerable module that was first launched to the station in September 2001. Uh, the first task uh, for today for Novitsky and Dubarov uh, in regard to piers will be uh, the removal uh, the disconnection of the Estrela telescoping boom, a long, 50-foot-long uh, boom, uh, Estrela being the Russian word for arrow, that is mated uh, to the side of the Piers docking compartment on one end and to the Poisk module on the other end. It will be... Uh, it will be uh, detached from the Piers docking compartment and retracted and stowed on the side of the Poisk module for later use. Other work associated with the Piers docking compartment uh, later this morning will be the disconnection of antenna feeder cables and other telemetry uh, and rendezvous uh, hardware uh, that uh, will set the stage uh, for Piers uh, to be undocked and disposed of via the ISS uh, Progress 77 cargo ship to which it is attached at the moment on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station. That uh, detachment and disposal is scheduled to occur two days after the launch of the new Naoka multipurpose laboratory module atop a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan no earlier than July 15th. Basically right before the boom, right? Well, if the container is going to be here, it's not going to be easy to get around it. But we need Oleg to pull it towards himself, and then you would be able to move to the operator's uh, position. Well, uh, I need to get to the boom. Well, yeah, that's there. Oleg, secure your safety tether hook, and then move uh, over to the um, operator's position using the boom. Copy. All right, I am uh, connected to 6020, and I am moving towards the operator's position. Yes, and move along, uh, use the boom to move. 
And Piotr, please stand by one. I'm standing by. Can I connect to the gap spanner with my hook? Or is it not um, advisable? Well, if there is nothing uh, uh, under your hand, then you can definitely do so. Copy. It's kind of chilly in the shade, and I feel great. Well, I even increased the heating, but it's still kind of chilly. Okay, I, I'm at the operator's position. That's great. And look at the... Bottom of the operator's position. Are there any uh, any uh, handrails? Yes, talking over each other. Should I move towards um, the boom? Because it's kind of chilly here. Chilly? Piotr, Piotr. Can you move the container so that you can follow um, along the boom uh -huh. and get there? Yes, but then I will have to let the gap piano go. I, you can connect to 54. 5034. Well, Oleg, the best option is to accept uh, the hook of the safety tether from Peter and then connect it to. All right, you mean uh, secure the container? Yes. Container. So the container needs to be connected to the boom. No, to the base. To the base. Do you mean the operator's uh, post? 
No, the nearest, uh, the handrail uh, to the MRM. It's 5034. That's the closest. And it should be under your hand, uh, right hand. Yes, it is. I'm trying to move there and accept the container. Sounds good. Okay, so what handrail should I use here? Two hours, 35 minutes into uh, this morning's spacewalk. Oleg Novitsky and Pyotr Dubrov are at the uh, Poisk module airlock hatch, uh, preparing to uh, stow the airlock, the airtight container that you see on the left side of your screen uh, that houses the uh, old fluid flow regulator that was removed from the Zarya module, replaced with a brand new unit that has now been checked out and is said to be in good working order by the Russian flight control team in Karlyov. Just a second. Hey, you can let it go. I see you. And you need the second hook. Yes. And I will try and um, guide it there. And how do I get to you with the hook? Well, you can connect to the same handrail and then take the container and I will reconnect to the safety tether. I understand where you're going and I am attached to the handrail closer to me. I cannot hold on to the container and hand over the tether to you. Well, I'm trying to unhook the second tether first. Let's do that. Yes, you're correct. Okay, I'm getting closer to the handrail where the container is. I'm holding the container. Yes, I am. And I am taking the tether hook now. Uh, 
I'm getting warmer now, that's good. Handrail 6034, I'm secured to it with my hook. And could you please tighten the tether so that uh, there is no slack? Yes. I'm trying to remove the slack. Maybe I can first uh, take it under the handrail. Yes, you may do that. It will be better. Get the tether under the handrail, correct? Okay, I tightened uh, the tether a little bit. I removed the slack. Good. Piotr, is everything nominal on your side? I think I need to remove the slack on my tether, too. It's a bit loose. Please try. So I need to go to the uh, now to the operator's post. Yes, copy. The tether is all twisted here. So I cannot really remove the slack. Okay, leave it as is then. Okay, so I pulled it towards me. Okay, and now proceed towards the strela. Boom. On the boom, there are handrails, and then you can just go along the lanyard. The long tether is secured to the handrail. Copy. So I'm trying to reach the lanyard.
two hours, 44 minutes into this morning's spacewalk, Oleg Novitsky and Piotr Dubrov will soon uh, be working to um, disconnect a variety of mechanical connections between the pier's docking compartment and the International Space Station to enable the Strela telescoping boom that has been used uh, in the past to transport uh, spacewalking cosmonauts to and from various work sites on the Russian segment of the station. It uh, will be moved away from the uh, pier's docking compartment for the final time and be stowed alongside uh, the Poisk module and a spacewalking ladder uh, that has been used alongside the pier's docking compartment will also be removed and stowed uh, at the Poisk uh, airlock. You may start. No, antenna is still in the way. The gap is not that big here. The International Space Station is flying uh, 258 statute miles over the South Atlantic, about to track uh, from southwest and northeast on this orbit of the Earth that will carry it across the west coast of Africa. Antenna is really in the way here. Piotr, antenna is really in the way. Piotr, antenna is really in the way. Yes. The lanyard and uh, the antenna are located in such a way... You can see uh, the Strela boom uh, on the right side of your screen. This is about a 55-foot-long boom at the top. Is Oleg Novitsky, Pyotr Dubrov at the bottom, as they will work in tandem to disconnect uh, the bottom of that boom from the pier's docking compartment and retract the boom so that it can be stowed on the side of the Poisk module.
antenna is on this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relative to the target. I translated to the other side of the Strela boom, so I avoid the target. Copy. It's not easy to follow the lanyard. It is wobbly, not easy to control your translation. Так, подхожу к таки ложному услову. Ра 
Хорошо, можешь на кольцо перестыковывать карабины своих. Окей, okay, you can rehook your tether hooks to the ring. Approaching the three-hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk, a spectacular view of the uh, Earth below as the International Space Station flies 260 miles over the South Atlantic. Oleg Novitsky, uh, at the top of your screen, at the top of uh, the Strela telescoping boom, at the bottom uh, of that boom, disconnecting a number of mechanical connectors is Pyotr Dubrov. The uh, Strela boom then will be uh, retracted by Novitsky. He is uh, at the so-called operator's post, and he will literally retract uh, the boom toward him to be stowed on the side of Poisk. Dubrov will ride the boom up uh, to where Novitsky is. Copy. And so stay close to the ring and to the grapple fixture. I am at the grapple fixture, copy. Release the adjustable tether hook from the handrail and tell the commander that uh, you are ready for the further translation. The tether hook is released. I'm ready for translation. Copy. So things are looking up. Okay, raise up a little bit here. Yes, about by 45 degrees on the handle. I think I'm going to egress the foot restraint and just not convenient. Okay. Петр, это тебе награда за все мучения. Петр. Not everybody can say that they got to ride the boom, the Strela boom. So this is your reward for today, Piotr. Yes, and the views are so magnificent, so spectacular from the Strela. Okay, so you can observe uh, from the camera. We can see your hands, so we can see you working. Now we can see the boom. We can see along the boom. Okay, higher, please. Raise it higher. The view from uh, Pyotr Dubrov's uh, 
high-definition helmet camera looking straight up that Strela boom at uh, Oleg Nowitzki. He's been working really hard. This boom is about 46 feet long. I think it's enough here. What is your impression? I would have stopped some time ago. Can you observe on the video camera? Yes, we can see the video image now. Now you may collapse the boom. Copy. Piotr, monitor the lanyard, please. They should not be tangled in loops. Well, there is some looping now, but when we get off the boom, we are going to untangle them. The lanyards. Is the boom collapsing? Yes, it is, uh, slowly. Three hours, two minutes into the spacewalk, the Strela boom slowly being retracted up toward uh, Oleg Novitsky, uh, where it will be stowed on the side of the Poisk module. The photography we get from this EVA will be unimaginable. It will be epic. I'm going by the Pechao area. Copy. I feel like I'm a worker on a ship, manning the oars. Is it difficult to rotate? No, it just is taking a long time to collapse the Strela boom. Ну 
Хотя идет тяжелее уже, да, чувствуется. Оно почти сложено на самом деле. Кольцо свободно, Петр? We're almost done with the boom collapsing. A Twitter, please check if nothing is uh, snagged or tangled. I'm checking now. The ring can move freely. Copy. Если усилие увеличивается, еще раз попробуй, то все, стоп, работа, и складываешь ручку, будем опускать. If uh, the effort to be applied is uh, more than before, then you may stop rotating the handle. Well, I think there's a little bit more to go on the strela, a little bit more to collapse. Okay, copy. After disconnecting a number of mechanical connections uh, for the uh, Strela boom uh, that had been housed at one end to the pier's docking compartment, uh, the boom uh, in the final stages of being retracted for final stowage alongside the Poisk module. On the correct side when you approach the handrail. It should be from the side of the EV hatch. Uh, I think uh, I should be on the side of the transfer handrail. Maybe I should uh, rotate to the close uh, to the transfer handrail. Yes, let's try it. Maybe as long as we approach on the other side, it will be still okay. As long as it's close to the hatch. Copy. We're in a handover uh, between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system. We should uh, be in a position to regain our communications and downlink video from the station momentarily. Three hours, eight minutes into the spacewalk, uh, Novitsky and Dubrov have replaced a fluid flow regulator unit in the Zarya module of the International Space Station. It has been checked out and is functioning perfectly according to Russian flight controllers. Now the crew is uh, in the process of uh, wrapping up the final decommissioning of the Piers docking compartment, first with the uh, removal of the uh, Strela telescoping boom uh, that had been attached uh, at its base to the, uh, to the Piers docking compartment and airlock. It uh, has been uh, retracted and is now uh, in the process of being stowed, as you can see, alongside the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment. Oleg Novitsky at the top of your screen, Pyotr Dubrov at the bottom of your screen. Um, tell me at which point you can rehook uh, your tethers uh, to MRM2. Right now, 
Go ahead and transfer to MRM2, Hendrils. The grapple fixture is uh, secured to Henry 6009 using um, adjustable tether, correct? That's right. Um, now transfer over to MRM2 Henry. Right now, I'm right at the transfer handrail. Uh, then uh, you can use it, Peter. Oleg, you can using the pitch uh, handle, you can uh, pitch up uh, the strella boom just a tiny bit. This is better. Just to lift up the the um, end point. stop. <laughs> It's starting to extend a little, um, so don't do that yet. Yeah, I'm waiting for Peter to move out of the way. Okay, I'm finally uh, hooked to the uh, transfer tether. Copy. Uh, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I um, started to feel some resistance, so this is all I. So I stowed the handle in the uh, stowage position. Do you want to rest a couple of minutes or uh, 